This is our first example for the Wilcoxon Ranksum test. Let's take a look at the example. A cardiac consultant at a large hospital decides to measure the cholesterol levels of a sample of eight patients seen at her clinic. The readings were as follows, and we have data for females and males. Test at the 5% significance level the hypothesis that there is no difference between the male and female cholesterol levels. Notice with this example that we are being asked to compare two sets of data that is unpaired. That is my first clue that this is a Wilcoxon rank sum test. The data is not paired so I can't do a paired sign or paired Wilcoxon. The other big clue is that my two data sets are different sizes. If you look at the females, I have 10 pieces of data. And the males, I have 11 pieces of data. So that's the other big warning sign that this is a Wilcox and Ranksum test. As with any hypothesis test, we need to follow our six steps, which are to write out our hypotheses, state if it's one or two tailed, and the significance level, calculate the test statistic, find the critical region and compare and conclude. So let's start with the hypotheses. So for our hypotheses we always have two hypotheses. We have a null hypothesis H0 and an alternative hypothesis H1. For a Wilcox and Ranksum test we're usually looking at differences between the two data sets and that's what our null hypothesis says that there is no difference. Our null hypothesis is always that nothing is different, no, everything stays the same. So for our null hypothesis, we are going to use E to female equals E to male. And there's a reminder in red there on the right, it says that weird N with the elongated right hand side is the Greek letter eta, and that represents the population average. Sometimes we can use mu, but it's safer to use eta because then that takes into account mean and medium. Our alternative hypothesis is either not equal to, less than or greater than and to decide on that we need to see what it says in the question. So for this question we have E to female, it says there is no difference. So the only alternative to that is that there is a difference and therefore E to female is not equal to male. Then we need to look if it's one or two tailed and the significance level. So because this is not equal to, that means I'm looking at less and greater than, and therefore it's two-tailed, and it states in the question that this is 5%. Now the most difficult part of the question, or the easiest place to go wrong, is the test statistic. So the test statistic for the Wilcox and Ranksum test has a few steps that we need to follow and these are slightly different to our paired Wilcox and test so we need to make sure we know the difference. The first thing we need to do with the Wilcox and Ranksum is we rank all the data. So that's every single piece of data in females and males. I treat it as one data set and I rank them from smallest to largest. So looking at my data there, I can see that 1.5, so the last female, is the lowest one. So that's going to get rank 1. If you are having a go at doing this yourself, you should pause the video now and see if you can get the correct ranks. Okay, so just going through the data, I've got 1.7 is rank 2, 1.8 is rank 3, 1.9 rank 4, then 2.1, 3.1, 3.7, 3.8. 4.2, 4.9, 5.3, and then I have two 7.1s, one in the male and one in the female, so that's going to take up ranks 13 and 14, and I need to make sure that I share those ranks between the two, so they're both going to get 13.5. Because I've used up rank 13 and 14, I need to make sure that my next number on the list, which is 7.3, gets rank 15. Then we have 9.2, 9.8, 10, 10.2, 10.5 and 10.9. So I can see I've got 21 ranks and I have 21 pieces of data. 
The next step is to calculate the total of the ranks for each variable. So for females, I'm going to add up all the ranks and then I'm going to do the same for males and that's going to give me a T, the total. So the total for females is 11 plus 5 plus 8 plus 18 plus 2 plus 13.5 plus 17 plus 4 plus 6 plus 1. And if you check that, that should give you 85.5. Then I do the same for males, adding the red ranks that I've written down and that gives me 145.5. The final step is I need to use the U formula. Now, if you cannot remember the U formula, it is at the top of the critical value table, which is table 11, the last one in your formula booklet, and it is given to you, so you don't need to learn this off by heart. But the formula is T minus fraction N, bracket N plus 1 over 2. So I'm going to do a U value for each of those T tests, or T values, sorry. So for females, I'm going to take the 85.5 as my T, and then there are 10 female pieces of data, so 10 bracket 10 plus 1 over 2, and that gives me 30.5. I'm going to do the same for males using 145.5 as the T value, and just checking the data, there are 11 male datas. So 11 bracket 11 plus 1 over 2 is my fraction, and that gives me 79.5. Then, just like we've done with many of these distribution-free tests, the test statistic is the smallest of those two values. So 30.5 is the smallest, and that's my test statistic. Then we come to the critical region. So just like the Wilcoxon um, and the paired Wilcoxon tests that we've already done, it has its own tables. If you um, notice, these are a different table. They're table 11. And they're the last one. And as you can see at the top there, we have the U test statistic that you need to calculate. It also tells me at the top there that the table gives the lower critical value. So I always use the lower test statistic. That's why I've chosen the lower of the two U values. For the table 11, I need N and M. So this is how many is in males and females. It doesn't matter which order you do these. So you can just do them in the order that they appear. So I've got 10 females and 11 males. If you have N as 11 and M as 10, it won't make a difference. So looking at my tables, we know this is a two-tailed 5%. So I'm looking at that bottom table and I'm going N across as 10 and M down as 11. If you have a look at going down 10, and across 11, it gives me the same value. So my critical value is 27, and my critical region is anything less than or equal to 27. So finally, we come to compare and conclude. This is a distribution free test, so there is no normal curve. So I'm just going to draw myself a line from 0 to infinity. And then, like we have done on uh, the Wilcoxon tests, I draw a line where my critical value would be, so 27. Anything less than or equal to that is the critical region, so the reject zone. And 30.5 is above that, it's on the right-hand side of that. Hence, we accept H0. So to conclude in context, I'm just going to remind myself of what I was asked for in the question. I was asked to test at the 5% significance level the hypothesis that there is no difference between male and female cholesterols. I am accepting H0, which said E to females was equal to E to males. So yes, I am agreeing that we have enough evidence that there is no difference. So therefore, there is significant evidence to suggest that there is no difference between the male and female cholesterol levels.